This is the week five waiver wire video. This man right here was dangerously close to being added to the drop list. One more bad game, one more bad game, and Justin Fields is riding pine tar for the rest of the year. Instead, he bounced back, and now he is the featured player on Underdog for the Thursday night football game. If you are new to Underdog, they have an absolute free square. Literally, on Thursday night, all Justin Fields has to do is complete one pass or run for one yard, and you're a winner on the platform. Literally, 0.5 total yards for new customers that use our code BDGE. If you have never gone to underdogfantasy.com or download the app, the link right in the description will take you directly to the app store. Really easy to log in, really easy to sign up, deposit $10 or more, and they're going to double. They're going to double whatever you put on the platform all the way up to $500. New special, I believe, all the way up to 500 plus you get this free square. So you get double the money, plus you get to double your money again because they're giving you a free square. Justin Fields, Thursday Night Football. We will get to some more player props in our Thursday Night Football preview on Thursday morning. But enough of that yapping. We're talking week five, the most trending players in fantasy football right now, what we're doing with them on the waiver wire this week. Not an overly impressive week for the waiver wire, but we do have some interesting players that we need to dive into. We need to talk about some of the players that we will be dropping on the flip side. So let's tuck our shirts in. What's our traps? Let's eat. So for these videos, as always, we're going to jump over to the sleeper platform and the trending tab over here, which will tell you the most added players of the week thus far, <clears throat> headlined by, I mean, listen, anytime you have a, a defense in the top five, it's not going to be a great week for the waiver wire. But Jaleel McLaughlin is an interesting player. He's interesting for multiple reasons because he's 5'7", 187. However, we have seen, we have seen a player undersized go kind of bonkers in the Denver Broncos franchise. Y'all might be old enough to remember Philip Lindsay. I certainly am. All right. Beatster, McLaughlin, has looked like the most explosive player in that backfield. Javonta Williams dealing with the hip injury. Now, as I said yesterday in the full live stream, Javonta Williams has this hip injury that's not really considered serious. However, he is coming off of a very serious ACL injury, okay? So what that means is maybe they want to rest him a little bit more. Maybe they do not want to put extra load on the knee. So what happens is if your hip is 80%, most normal players could probably play through that. But if your hip is 80%, that means other muscles, tendons, joints, structures of your body are compensating appropriately. They need to make up that extra 20% of explosiveness, energy, whatever that you are lacking in the hip, thus putting more stress on a knee that should not be taking the full stress to begin with right now. So there's a very good chance that he ends up sitting out further. Now, Jaleel McLaughlin was a dude who was making plays in the preseason. He was a dude who was getting a little bit of run in the preseason. And with Javonta Williams out, they used him accordingly. Seven for 72 on the ground, three for 32 through the air, and a touchdown. He was making big plays. He was giving something this offense had not had. Javante's not ripping off big plays. Samaj P. Ryan is like the opposite of a big play. So McLaughlin's interesting. They get the Jets, which is a really, really tough matchup, obviously. Kansas City is like, they're a really good defense, but I don't know if they're necessarily one you need to like shy away from in any matchup. Plus, McLaughlin gets used in the passing game. So if Javante's still out in that sense, like they're going to be down. Uh, they'll probably have to throw the ball a lot. He is probably my number one waiver wire pickup of the week, but I'm not overly excited about it, right? I'm looking at a guy who I would throw because it's kind of up in the air in terms of what his workload's going to be in terms of how long Javante Williams is going to miss with the hip injury. I don't know, maybe somewhere in like the 7 to 12% range, depending on how bad you need a running back. We do have bye weeks approaching, so keep that in mind as well. I believe we have the Bucks, the Chargers, the Browns, and one other team. So there are some heavy power, heavy fire offenses on the bye this week. You might need some of these players. Outside of Jaleel McLaughlin at running back, there is really like nobody that I am spending any sort of uh, fab dollars on at the running back position. It is basically all wide receivers. After that, you have my goat, Michael Wilson, rookie wide receiver, Arizona out of Stanford. I've been yapping about him since the summer, but I do think there are other viable options that I'd probably rather have than Michael Wilson. Uh, Jameson Williams is obviously a, a former top 10 pick, and we finally get to see him play on the field because they changed their suspension length, whatever the fucking case may be. He's no longer out for six games. He's only out for four games, which means he is eligible to return this upcoming week. Does that mean he gets full snap range? Does that mean he's on the field for the majority of the game? I really don't know. I would imagine he's going to be eased back into the lineup. They play Carolina, Tampa Bay, Baltimore, Las Vegas before the bye, but nothing really tough on the schedule um, here. So head coach Dan Campbell, 
as you could see, or you guys can't really see on the right there, but there is this little note section on Sleeper. It says, uh, Dan Campbell said that Williams will serve in a supporting role should the receiver be active in week five against the Panthers. I'm not looking for yards. I'm not looking for explosives. Not looking for touchdowns, man. Just be a reliable receiver like any of those guys in the room. That's it. And if you could take anyone for face value in that shit, it is kind of Dan Campbell in terms of like not even taking what he says in face value, but his actions, right? This has the same energy about like Jameer Gibbs right now. They have a clear defined role for how they want their players to play on the field. And um, Jameer Gibbs is put into his role. Jameson Williams would probably be like the wide receiver version of that. You can tell he sounds a little frustrated. I would be shocked if Josh Reynolds does not play significantly more snaps than Jameson Williams in this one. And honestly, Josh Reynolds has played well. Like he deserves to be a relative full-time player. So Jameson Williams could have a very big second half of the year, depending on if he's a good fucking football player to begin with. I tend to think that he probably is, but so for right now, I don't want to overspend, although he is my number one waiver wire wide receiver on the list. And I think if you need receiver more than you need running back, then I would be fine taking him over uh, McLaughlin. He could be much more of a long-term play and a guy maybe over the fantasy playoffs kind of pops off for you. So I'm looking probably in, in, in about the same range if he is available in your league somewhere in the um, 10 to 15 percent-ish range and kind of see what happens from there. If it is a full PPR league, you're probably knocking him down a little bit in value because it's not going to be a high volume player. But going back to my favorite rookie, in my bold prediction video that I put out right before the season started, one of my bold predictions that Michael Wilson would be a top three rookie fantasy wide receiver. And what did he do this weekend? Seven for 76 and two touchdowns. We're coming off of an 86-yard game and a 56-yard game. He is becoming a very good player. It is of no surprise to me. He's a dude that is 6'1", 215, runs great routes. The only reason he dropped, and he was a third-round pick, like, more people need to be talking about the fact that he was a day two pick. And he only dropped because he was dealing with so many injuries at Stanford. Had he stayed healthy, he would have been probably on that first, second round border, in my humble ass opinion. But we didn't get to see his full college career play out. Michael Wilson is a dude who is benefiting from the fact that the Cardinals are actually 8,000 times better than anyone uh, projected them to be and imagined them to be. And Josh Dobbs is a stable piece of this offense that is allowing the offense to be stable which means that will transfer over to the weapons, obviously. Now, Michael Wilson, the reason you might be asking, like, Nick, you love Michael Wilson. He just has a breakout game. Why are we not going all in? Because next week he'll probably go four for 40, and then we'll be dealing with the same carousel again. I do expect him to have big games throughout the, the rest of the year, but Hollywood is still the one there. They still use Zach Ertz heavily. They still use James Conner heavily. They will have games where they're terrible. So he's going to be one of those players where, because the offense isn't great, he ebbs and flows. And it's going to be very difficult to decide when to actually throw him into your starting lineup. Um, you know, over the next few games, I do play Cincinnati. I would be okay throwing him into my flex spot if I was like, you know, again, there's the Browns, the Chargers. There's a lot of good teams. If you had like Mark Cooper and Keenan Allen, you had a lot of high-end wide receivers that are going to be on by this week. But you could do much worse than, um, than Michael Wilson against the Bengals, against the Rams, against Seattle. Like you have a lot of solid matchups coming up with him. There just is not a lot of enticing waiver wire ads outside of these guys. It, it's it's pretty gross. Like CJ Stroud should probably be very highly owned at this point. If you're in a one QB league and you need a quarterback, I would actually probably throw between eight and ten percent of my fab on CJ Stroud if whoever you had was you know ended up becoming a, a relatively large bust. Johnny Smith, like, do we really want to talk about it? He is somehow. I hesitate to say that like this is a fluke, but he's been relatively productive and three straight games, four for 47, five for 37, six for 95. And again, I think the most important aspect here is the fact that he reunited with Arthur Smith this off season. They've got the Smith connection and Arthur Smith loved, loved Johnny Smith. There is, there is a chance that in Arthur Smith's mind, Johnny Smith is better than Kyle Pitts or at least better for the system he's running or in some capacity. I don't know, but Johnny Smith seems to be, listen, I'm not like ready to start him right away, but he should probably be picked up. And I think just based on the numbers, we have to seriously look at him as like a top 15, top 18 fantasy tight end going forward. Uh, I don't feel great about putting him into my lineup, but Houston, Washington, Tampa Bay, not impossible defenses. Some other lower own guys to look at. Wondell Robinson uh, finally made his like foolish time return last night on Monday Night Football. Played 64% of the snaps, six targets, five catches, 40 yards. 
It's kind of what he's been in the NFL so far is get a ton of targets, but they're all about six yards down the field. So if you're in a PPR league, he could be a nice little player for you. And I do think he will become more and more of a piece of that offense. Don't forget, he was also a second round pick by the current regime. So they obviously really like him and I think they want to use him at a high capacity. We saw it last year before the ACL injury. So I think he's definitely someone you could pick up. If Tyler Boyd's available while T. Higgins deals with a rib fracture, he'll be an okay flex fill-in. Terrace Marshall's been playing pretty well. I'd still obviously prefer Thielen, and I'd even prefer DJ Chark still above Terrace Marshall. That's really it, though. If we flip sides and we look at guys that we can drop. Oh, also, um, our waiver wire rankings are available on bdge.co. So by the time you guys watch this week, fives waiver wire rankings plus fab suggestions on every relevant player will be up on the site for our big dog members bdge.co go check it out and go cash out on josh kelly it is time to drop his ass you can definitely let him go because they have a buy and then after that eckler should be back pat fryer moved he's dealing with a relatively significant hamstring injury he really hasn't done much to date it's a really tough offense to even uh be excited about so he can definitely be dropped if you don't have an ir spot and you want to get rid of him Kareem Hunt, they got the buy. Then San Fran, definitely droppable. Justice Hill is certainly droppable. I would hold on to Luke Musgrave. I still think they're a few inches away from like connecting on a few deep passes. Roshan, Roshan's another guy I'd like to hold on to, but I don't think it's necessary. I don't think any of the guys on this list are necessary to hold on to, except for probably Quentin Johnson. I would definitely hold on to him. I would hold on to Sky Moore as well. If you're a Pollard owner, Rico Dowdle should be held on to. If you're a Saquon owner, Matt Breda should be held on to. Marvin Mims should probably still be held on to. He's playing well enough that eventually Sean Payton's going to stop fucking around. Algier might be a popular question. Yeah, I mean, our offense is just so bad right now. I um, I mean, when you look at the outlier, we're four weeks in now, and you can pretty clearly see that week one, those couple touchdowns were not who we should expect Algier to be. We could see Bijan getting more and more and more of the snaps, right? 56 down to 44, down to 30, down to 26. Maybe next week's up to 35 again, but like really, what are you going to be doing with that? Uh, Elijah Moore, is he droppable? We got the pie. We got San Fran. Again, another guy I'd like to hold on to, but I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to hesitate to drop him if I need that spot. You can definitely drop Dalvin Cook. You can drop Brandon Cooks. I'd hold on to Samaj P. Ryan here just because of the Javonta Williams injury. These other rookie wide receivers, you could probably drop Josh Downs, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Yep. All right. Well, quick little waiver wire week for y'all. Two things that I'd really appreciate all doing if you want to support the brand. The best way to do so is to go download the Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code BDGE. That'll get you a 100% deposit match. Plus, you will get that Justin Fields free square. Also, our waiver wire rankings, as well as our just regular sit start weekly rankings, are available within our membership on BDGE. .co available right now for week five. I love you. I'm out of here.